In Blender 4.3, you can now use geometry nodes with Grease Pencil, which might not sound too exciting initially, but the thing that makes Grease Pencil different from using curves is that you can draw something different on each frame. So think about it, if you can turn Grease Pencil into a mesh, that means you can have a different mesh per frame. I'll make a few examples to show you. 4.3 is in beta right now, and you can download it from the daily builds on blender.org or use the Blender launcher, which is linked below. First is Grease Pencil to mesh. All right, so first what we need is Shift A, add a grease pencil and I'll choose empty right here and we can press control tab to go into draw mode I'm just gonna make sure that the strength is all the way up and we can just you know draw something real quick like that then we can go over to geometry nodes I'll go back into object mode add a new node tree and the idea behind this is that we're going to turn all of the points into a volume and then the volume into a mesh so we can do grease pencil to curve I'll also uncheck layers as instances we can do points to volume and then volume to mesh and we already have something if you want the points to be spaced more evenly you can also resample the curve like this change this to length and then you know set it to whatever you want this length is just going to be how far apart each point is and if you want you can you know change the size of the the voxel size and the radius and stuff right here let's go back to the layout tab i'm going to turn on auto keyframing down here and i'm going to get a dope sheet over here dope sheet editor set this to grease pencil and I'm gonna make sure that only show selected is turned off that way we can actually see the frames right here now we can basically just draw whatever we want so I'm just gonna go into draw mode tab to go into edit mode select everything with a X to delete it tab to go back into draw mode and if we want we can draw like a ball flying across the screen we can draw whatever we want and it's going to turn into a mesh so first frame if you want you can also turn uh onion skin on like that so we're on the second frame let's uh you know do something like that if you want to actually see the onion skin you have to turn this off to see it All right, so really quickly, just did some smear frames like that. And this took me, you know, I mean, like I can play it in real time, like it didn't take me very long and I already have something that looks pretty natural. Like to the time it takes to rig a sphere to stretch in the way that this is stretching, like you can do it, but it, something like this is much easier. It's much, you know, for certain use cases, if you want smears, um, this is going to be so much easier than like, you know, inserting keyframes on shape keys. I think it's just annoying. So I'm really excited to see stuff like this happening. And this is also very exciting for 2D animators. So you can do much more in geometry nodes with this. I already showed the evenly spaced based, you know, points like that, but you can also smooth this out by adding a set position and also get a blur attribute and in the value plug a position and then you can use the iteration to smooth it out you can see right here it will make it much smoother like that if you want you can also have radius control in here so the way that you would do that you should be able to just plug the radius into the radius like that the radius is probably too low right now so what you can do is just like go into edit mode select everything and i believe you can press alt s and eventually it will get thick enough so that you can see it. You can control per point, I believe. So let's just select this. Yeah, you can control per point. So you can have different thicknesses and this should work nice if you're actually drawing with a tablet that has pressure sensitivity. Um, if you don't want to have to worry about it like being too small so you can't see it, a thing that you can do, let's just reset this like that. A thing that you can do is just like add to this. So just add a math node, set to add, and add some small amount to it like that. So you know that by default it should always, uh, you know, be seen, but then you can, you know, change the radius like that. If instead you wanted to be able to draw a shape and have it fill in, the setup is going to be a little different. Um, I'll open up one of my tests. So with this setup, you should be able to draw like any shape like this and just have it be filled in. And this also works from different angles like this. So you can see these two shapes are, you know, at different angles. You can do it like straight up, whatever. You can have them intersecting. That's how I drew this uh, pretty crappy looking car. But the car is animated. <laughs> 
This is just a proof of concept. I know it's not good. So the way that this is working is, you know, grease pencil to curves. And then I'm using the new for each element zone that's in 4.3. And basically what this is doing, it's seeing how many different splines there are. So how many different curves I'm drawing like this would be one curve. It's going to check to see how many points are on that spline and make sure that the circle has the same amount. And then it's setting the position to, you know, the same as the points on the spline also. So it's basically just making a circle that is the same shape as the curve that you're drawing. So that's what's happening right here. And then instead of doing points to volume immediately, I'm distributing points on the faces. And again, I'm setting the point radius to match the curve, then points to volume, and then volume to mesh, and then smoothing it out. So it's very similar. Um, the only you know big difference is that I'm using this setup to actually fill the curve in, which makes it very similar also to um, Will Anderson's mother puffer setup. And I'm not trying to say that like you shouldn't check this out. Will Anderson is great. Um, and this is a really cool tool that does much more than what I just showed. Like it has UV support and stuff like that. Um, and also there is another um, group of artists, Yonk, that made this step motion add-on. And so this is kind of similar also. You can do like per frame animations with meshes, but this again is much more uh, powerful than what I just showed you also. But it's another, uh, you know, similar thing that you should, you should check both of these accounts out, Yonk and Will Anderson. These were both made quite a while ago at this point, like at least a few months. But now with 4.3, you can do these things much easier if you want like a quick solution. Another thing that can be pretty nice for like debugging and stuff is is uh, joining the original grease pencil back in. So you can do uh, join geometry. You can see I just duplicated the group input and you can plug this in. And this should make it so you can see both of them at the same time, even if like the radius is too low like that. You might just want to, you know, add a switch or something so that um, you can turn it on and off easily like this. And then you can just plug in a group input and then you have control of it over here like that. If you draw something that you like and you want to actually turn it into a mesh that you can edit, uh, let's see, if we go into object mode, right click it, you cannot, you don't have the option to convert it into a mesh like you normally would. So a workaround for this is that you can make a new object. Let's just make a plane, uh, add a new node tree. You can drag in the grease pencil right here, plug it in like that. So now, even if we turn off the grease pencil, you can still see it right here. All right, uh, and then this you can right click and convert to mesh and now it will convert. It's a little annoying that you can't just convert it into a mesh immediately, but this doesn't take too long. So it's a workaround that actually works. All right, next is a setup that you can use to make hair. So I'm gonna add in a Suzanne mesh right here, go into edit mode, and I'm just gonna select the parts of the face that I actually want to have hair on them. So I'll select all these, and I'm just going to Shift D to duplicate, and then P to separate by selection. So you can see now we have two separate meshes. This one is like a hair cap, and this is where we're actually going to you know, put stuff. I'll also make a new empty grease pencil right here go into draw mode and I'm just going to, you know, draw a few hairs like this. It doesn't have to be much. Now let's go into geometry nodes, add a new node tree. I'll call this GP hair. And we need to reference that hair cap that we made. So I'll I'll just drag that in right here. Make sure this is set to relative. And we want to distribute a bunch of points on this. So we have that right here. Can you know take a look at it? This is what's this is what's happening. We have a bunch of points like that. So I don't know how new this is, but I haven't seen it before. It's called the interpolate curves node right here. So we have the guide curves and we have points. So this is why we did the distribute points on faces. We can plug this in right here. And first we you know need to turn this into curves. So we can do grease pencil to curves. Uncheck that. And you can see it's actually interpolating between the few you know, strands that we drew. I want to be able to see the grease pencil that I was drawing, so I'm going to do the same thing that I did before with the join geometry node like that. And now you can use this to draw hair. So we can go back into draw mode. I'll actually just delete everything first. And I, I think this is very easy to control. So say, for instance, we want like short hair uh, on most of the head like that, uh, except for maybe some like, you know, 
whatever, like a, a pompadour and it's curly like that. Now you can see we have a bunch of hair and it's being kind of interpolated between. It's it's changing the length of the ones in between. It's also changing the shape a little. And then all you need to really do is use like a curve to mesh to give it some thickness. I'll just add a, not a mesh circle, but a curve circle. And I'll turn this down to three for now. If you want these to like get skinnier towards the end, get a set radius, set curve radius right here and plug in a spline parameter like this. You want to use the factor like that, um, but this is actually backwards. It's getting thicker at like the end of the curve. So we can flip this around a few different ways. Um, the one that I like to use is the map range like this. You can set the two minimum to one and the two max to zero like that. And we can also just turn the radius down right here. And now you can see it's getting skinnier towards the end. All right, so we have the grease pencil to curves. We have the curve to mesh to give it thickness. I'm gonna add a set material just so this looks a little better while we're, you know, looking at it. All right, so I'm just gonna make some like brown hair, I guess. And I'm just gonna add like, I'm gonna add this color to the RGB. And we're gonna plug this into the radius also so that when we turn the subsurface up, we uh, get a color that looks a little better. All right, and now we can add some noise if we want also. So set position, get a noise texture. The way that I like to do this is take the color, subtract, by 0 0.5 and then scale like that plug that into the offset and this is gonna you know push it all over the place it's also going to push the connecting points which we don't want so you can do a similar thing that we did for the curve radius you can just use a spline parameter and a map range right here and i'll just get a another scale node like that i'll put this on the bottom we can plug this in right here actually you don't need the map range for this so the connecting points shouldn't move around at all it moves more as it gets further down the strand and if you want more control you can just use a float curve something like this change the shape of it or you can do something like this where all the noise is at the very end do whatever you want but yeah now you can you know change the amount of hair you want with the distribute points on faces so if you want you could like crank this up super high to like 500 or something like that. And don't forget that this is still grease pencil. So if we turn on auto keyframe and go to, you know, a few frames away, something like this, we can go into edit mode and move these around. Let's just like select this. I'll turn on proportional editing like that. And we can, you know, move, move this like that. And this will actually animate between the two frames. And if you want, you can, you know, do this with it turned on so you can actually, you know, see what is happening like that. Now, the noise is going to make it look like it jitters a little, but if we turn the detail all the way down, then it should jitter quite a bit less when you move it like that. But this could be really nice for maybe like stop motion style hair. Like in Rankin and Bass movies, you have real hair and it kind of flickers uh, and changes shape a little uh, between frames. This could be really nice for doing something like that, especially um, compared to something like shape keys. This is like setting a shape key per frame without having to set it up in the side panel over here. You can have a person's hair flopping around or something like that, and you could animate it however you want. If you actually wanted to do that, I think the easiest way to set it up is to make sure that the hair is parented to the hair cap like this. And I guess then you could parent the hair cap to Suzanne. So then when you move Suzanne, everything moves with it. I'm just going to test this out to see how it actually looks. Let's set a keyframe for Suzanne right here. Go a few frames, head back like that. Then we'll head forward and then back to normal right there. So this is what we have. Now I can go into the grease pencil right here. Could do hair like, like that. The hair would go forward. All right, so the hair will go forward like that and then back to normal right here. And then it should be, you know, stretching back like that, maybe even more. And then coming forward like this. Let's do a little more right here. And then we can go back to normal. I'll just duplicate this frame. And we could also have, um, let's duplicate another one so we have a little bit of a bounce back 
But yeah, then you have like a very, you know, simple hair flip animation like that. It bobbles a little. And if you want it to look better, you can add some uh, in-between frames, which you can see grease pencil right here. So I'll just select this and, you know, move it in between like that. Put this one in between also. You're basically just going through and, uh, you know, filling in the gaps. So, you know, this workflow isn't going to be for everybody, but for people like 2D animators, maybe this is something you, you prefer. All right, let's see how this looks now. We actually have animated hair that's drawn per frame, essentially. Now, if you wanted to, you could, you know, draw per frame like this. I'll just draw something uh, simple. It doesn't have to be very good. Okay, so this is what it looks like in Grease Pencil, something simple. And when we turn it on, we have something like this. So it's moving very fast, but I'm just trying to show you that if you want, you can, you know, do whatever you want with this. I'm just trying to give you ideas at this point. If you're more careful with how and where you draw, you can definitely make this more stable, but the amount of hairs shouldn't actually change because it's referencing all of the points right here. So the grease pencil geometry note stuff has gotten me very excited just thinking about all of the things that could be done with it. So if you have any cool ideas of things that you want to use this for, let people know in the comments below because I'd definitely be interested in hearing what you're going to do with it. So this video was more quick and casual than my other recent videos, and I just wanted to get this one done quickly. If you like this sort of thing, then check out my Patreon where I've been making behind the scenes videos, quick videos like this, and doing some other things like office hours where people can come and talk to me on Discord. I'm putting a lot more effort into Patreon right now, and checking it out would help me very much. I've also been doing a lot of public events and things like that on Discord, so if you want to hang out with like-minded people or get Blender help, then check that out. That's it. Have a good one.